5207-20A Life Story, Hammond, Indiana, USC. Good evening, friends. Afternoon, rather. I'm happy to be here this afternoon. And if there's any good thing, let it be for the glory of God. If Mr. Jackson is in here from South Africa, Brother Jackson, if he's in the meeting this afternoon, really wants to see you at the book concession right away. Brother Jackson, about arrangements for tonight on living, if you will. He told me to announce that he wanted to meet you at the bookstand right now, all right? And Billy, wherever you are, while Brother Jackson will go to the bookstand right away. Now to the audience, I wish to address you this afternoon in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, as God has given me this privilege along with you to be his representative, his servant, and his child by grace through Jesus Christ. Many of us have many things that we could tell if, if each one could get up here and tell a life story. Many of it probably would be full of victory and power, and many of it would be full of heartaches and disappointments. And we each one have a life that God has given us, and we must live it. And I, to the, my humble opinion, if you'll get this, I think the most best life in the world, no matter whether it's up or down, if you'll find God's path and walk in it where God has ordained for us to walk, if we always we find a victory no matter. I think of Blind Fanny Crosby when she was sitting there in the darkness. The question was once asked, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? And I think of all the men and the great men down through the ages, any man that ever amounted to anything, mostly were men and women who believed Jesus Christ. Isn't that right? And I think of how the prophets wrote of him, and how the ancient men, they foretold of him, and how the patriarchs, and how the rulers who raised against him was brought low, and so forth. And I think down through the age, I think of the father of our nation, Washington, how he trusted God. I think of Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln, of course. I don't. I'm not a politician. But Lincoln was a favorite among all the presidents we've ever had. He had to come up the hard way. Maybe because I had to come that way is the reason I sympathize with Lincoln, splitting riddles and writing in the dirt and so forth. And the only books that we believe that Lincoln ever had until I was 21 years old was the Bible and the Fox Book of Martyrs. And that's what molded that character. Let me see what you read. Let me go in your office, in your house, and see what you read. I will tell you about what you are. That's right. See everything to its nature. And you keep the Bible laying close to it. For your children, read it, for example. You read it yourself. Be an example. That's what I didn't have in my young life. But by God's grace, I want to put that before my children. And if there's any grand generation, another generation, may they put it before theirs. And now, if we could think today... I heard you when I came in last night, till my heart was thrilled when you were singing, All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. This late doctor do it. When he was dying, he was standing before his congregation. He was trying to represent Jesus Christ as being the greatest of all. He was God, he was Emmanuel, and how his power should be in the church, and it would make them quit their selfishness. He was a pastor of a great church, and his congregation even was against him. They were waiting just for conference, so... They could vote him out and so forth and send him away <laughs> but his heart was bleeding and so then while he was preaching his heart out one day he had a heart attack and fell forward there happened to be a physician in the church come to him and said doctor do it you just have a few minutes longer to live you can't make it he called for two faithful deacons who held up his hands and they got his hands up and stood him to his feet and said let me stand on my feet as long as there's breath in my body behind him was a cross that represented the cross of christ was back there by his baptistry and he stood up like that he said if i have one word i want to say is this all heal the power of jesus name let angels prostrate fall bring forth a royal diadem and crown him lord of all he started uh, staggering backwards like that. When he went backwards, he threw one arm around one side of the cross and one the other, and then threw his head down and went to meet the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the way to go. I think of Paul Rader, that great gallant hero who stormed Chicago about the last revival you've ever had in Chicago. When Paul Rader stood there, went out there, and he was among his own people, put him to grief and sorrow and upset, which gave him a cancer, and after a while died. The people that was against him and doing so was the ones who done it. And he was the little Moody Bible Institute over here, had a little quartet, as I understand, 
out there singing for him. There the window shades pulled down and he was dying. And Paul was quite a cutter. Puts me in the like form of mind of Brother Bosworth. He's always had a sense of humor. And so he looked around. He seen the curtains all down. He came to himself, looked around and said, Say who's dying here, me or you? He said, raise them shades and sing me some good gospel songs, snappy. And they got to singing down at the cross where my savior died, or something like that. Said that sounds better. Says where's Luke? And Luke was back in the other room. They brought Luke in to where he was. He took hold of his hand and said, Look, we have come a long ways together, brother, down to the shady lanes. But said, think of it. In five minutes from now, I'll be standing in the presence of Jesus Christ, clothed in his righteousness, and died. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime with patterns leave behind us, footprints on the sands of time. Make us for others to travel. Think of Lincoln, who knew a shot there because of his gallantry and standing for humane, and what was right and for God was told when he was going to die. When they, the bullet that went through his, below his, in his body there, and he was smothering to death, he said, turn my heads towards the setting of the sun. He said, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thou be done. Repeating the model prayer as he went out to meet God. Oh my, what are we, men and women? Look at Eddie Paranet there. He was persecuted in everything, and what he thought. He wrote one day there, when the inspiration hit him, he picked up the pen and wrote the integration song, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. I think of Hoskins there, when he wrote The Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, That Savorish Like Me. I think of Blind Fanny Crosby. What could God promise you? You never seen a daylight in your life. You are blind all your life. What do you think about Jesus Christ? She said, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Thou the stream of all my comfort, more than life to me. Whom have I on earth? Beside thee, or whom in heaven but thee. Let us be up and doing with a heart for any strife. Be not like a dumb, driven cattle. Be a hero. Each one of you is a Christian. You are born again Christian. Then let's stand up. No matter how bad the battleground, the background has been, let's look forward now to the coming of our Lord when this mortal will take on immortality. Back to a few moments now. I'm trying not to keep you no longer. It's already um, past time. 20 minutes after 3. I'm go about an hour. I'll try to be finished if I can. I, many of you here probably, has had a life story. Things that I hate to go back over. But I, one of my greatest altar calls I ever made in America, I had 2,000 sinners to come to Jesus Christ in Pensacola, Florida. After the life story one afternoon, I trust to God that was next to Durban, where we had 30,000. Now, I want to read a portion of scripture, always God's word, because my word fills what God's word can't fill. Now, found in the 13th chapter of Hebrews, at the beginning of the 10th verse, and reading 14th verse inclusive. We have an altar where of they who have no right which serve tables for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he may sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. How many of you is away from home today? Let's see your hands away from home. My, just look here. As I think, if I had time, we'd sing that song. We are pilgrims and we are strangers here. We are sick in a city to come. Is that right? No matter where you ever roam, there will be no place who, what will ever take home's place. Is that right? Wouldn't you just like to take a little trip today? Most of you here are my age, or maybe a little above. And wouldn't you just like to go back to childhood? Just be a little will and go back and live another day in childhood? Wouldn't you love to do that? Oh, how I would like to. 
even though with its sorrows and tears and disappointments, I'd like to leave one more day of it just to go back. I remember the little old place where I come from, and no matter how humble it was, every one of you here can remember the old place where mother used to stand under the tree, perhaps on an old cedar wash tub with a washboard, and you as a little girl or boy playing around, maybe time. You remember that, the many heartaches and sorrows that went through, how you pulled onto her an old spotted apron, like to see her again today, but that can't be now. Now, she goes on, like to see old dad, or need to see him come from the field with that red handkerchief stick in his pocket, see him get up of a morning on a cold morning and go back and make a fire in a big old drum store. I used to hear him sing, oh, where's my boy tonight? My heart overflows, for I love him, he knows. Or oh, where's my boy tonight? As he stand by the little old wash bench with his sleeves rolled up and washing his face and hands, and he had real black wavy hair, he look around, oh, how I'd like to see him once more, but I can't. He's gone on. Here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. If you could go back to the home where you was raised at, it wouldn't be home that you was one time. A few days ago, I'd taken someone who came to visit me up there where the old home place was. Why? There's a housing project. Well, it's, it isn't the old home anymore. We have no continuing city. I remember when our first little home we lived in was a log house. There's about three or four of us little Branhams out there. We didn't even have a floor. Just the dirt. Papa in the right, in the middle of the floor. He had a stamp that had been sawed off and laid in there. And some rock laid on top of it. An old drum stove setting there. And how the table where it was made out of. And an old bench that he got some boards off of. Of a barn down there and sawed a bench out like a church if you like. And set it behind the table. And mama a little old, we call it a monkey stove. Anybody know what a monkey stove is? Let's see you are. Oh my, that's fine. An old-fashioned coal oil camp. Did you ever clean a lamp chimney? Let's see. Well, I'm not the only country boy here. I'm going to take off my coat and feel right at home. That's right. Yes, sir. How many ever slept on a strotic? Let's see your hand. Well, see, Chicago not a big place after all, is it? That's right. My, my, how many times have I slept on an old strotic? And first time you put in there, maybe feel the grasshopper kicking. Have to get up and find him, you know, where he was down in there. Why many times I've done that, sure. See, mama, take that big old stick. She was hanging on the wall, a piece of an old, well, she done, used to, or three. She'd use it to poke her clothes with it out in the yard. When she was boiling her clothes, did you ever boil your clothes in the backyard? Oh my, lye soap, you know, and she'd use that to punch her clothes with, and she had a string in it, she'd hang it up on the wall. Now, that was hers on that side, but the other side was a golden roll that hung on the door, right over the door, you see. It was a hickory about that long, with all the Ten Commandments wrote out on the end of it. Little boys must behave, and I'd believe in the golden rule in that way. So then, if that ever come up missing, there's a razor strop hanging back in the back there that took its place. And I tell you, my education was pretty stiff. Dad, I heard he had Irish eyes flashed like Stonewall Jackson. I know something was incoming when I done wrong, but I love him today with all my heart. He never gave me half the whippings that I deserved. And then I remember Mama used to take that stick and smooth out the bed, you know, the mash it down, you know, and smooth it out. How many knows what a bolster is? It's a big well. What do you know? See, is there anybody here from Kentucky? Raise up your hands. Well, my, my, that's exactly something, isn't it? All right, down in Indiana, or oh, this is Indiana, down in southern Indiana, there's some I asked there one day in my church. I said, how many here is from Kentucky? And about two thirds of them stood up. Someone said, I said, I don't get it. And one of them stood and said, but Burnham said, the groundhogs and Kentuckians has took the country. So coming across from over the other side, but they're in the front of this little old log cabin. I remember, I used to look at them all chinked mud in the cracks like that. And I'd say, my, 
that house will stand forever why it can't go down what a wonderful place it is but my you should see it now see here we have no continuity and around in front of the door was a place wore off and it was just bare and slick where we a little bunch of branhams played out there like a bunch of little opossums or something around there little bitty fellows wallowing around over one another see i like to leave that over again i really would i say i remember the old spring where i used to go down there and lay down on my stomach and drink and drink come back up go out and take dad's a jug of water out of the spring back out to the field where he was in harvest or something worked so hard till i seen my mama cut his shirt loose from his back from sunburn where i'd stick to his back 75 cents a day to take care of me look it's true you have read my life story out there my dad did drink but i don't care what he done he's still my daddy and let me tell you something young folks this afternoon don't you never get little enough to call your mother and dad an old man and woman you don't never do that no matter what they are no matter what they are you respect them as your dad and mother you'll never know what how you love them till you hear the squeaking of a casket going out and knowing that's the last of it it won't be the old man and the old woman then a lot of times they're right when you think they are wrong always honor their father and mother which may lengthen the days upon the earth the lord thy god giveth thee that's the first commandment with the promise be kind to your mother and dad i remember my daddy died he had uh, was uh, just beginning to gray a little bit at the temples when he laid there in the casket and i picked up his head which he died right on my arm i picked up his head and his locks of hair fall down i thought oh dad i looked at his hand he had his finger cut off there in the shoulder one day i thought of all the heartaches that had caused him it wasn't the old man that was my daddy i don't care who else what they thought about him he was still my dad i loved him and i love him today i had the privilege on bringing to christ now and my mother also my mother is living she's supposed to arrive here this afternoon and i trust that she will get here now back in those days i remember some of the little things just for details i remember one thing that stood out in them days was every saturday night go to town to get the groceries did you ever have to do that <laughs> go in on saturday night and get the food for the week and live in the country and i'd work hard all week i got a dime when i was a great big boy 12 14 years old i got 10 cents dad said you don't spend it all in one place 10 cents mm -hmm. billy says daddy you got five dollars you can let me have how things have changed certainly has i remember that 10 cents i'd go to town and my i'd go into this store and i'd get my dime changed and i'd get a penny's worth of red hots how many about that many in a sack they wouldn't even let you look at them hardly for a penny now then i'd go over and get me a penny ice cream cone a little bitty old ice cream cone and I'd get it for a penny what a day that was when it's different then when we were little bitty lads i remember when we was all at home you know playing around the house i used to see dad come home and on saturday evening with all or afternoon he'd get an old backwood of a fair jersey wagon and we had a little old mule we'd hook that wagon and it was uh, winter time we'd put straw in the back of the wagon little covered over wagon and get blankets and wrap up and dad and the mother sat in the front seat and down the road they would go and mother and dad talking you know they was about 25 years old apiece i guess and they were setting up there talking you know driving this little old mule why we was in first class wasn't our mule wagon but we were going somewhere to the store dad would get about three dollars and a half for the week and he would go down have to spend every bit of it nearly for groceries to fill out feed all those kiddies through the week and we didn't have fried chicken and so forth but we did have to get things that really stuck to the ribs potatoes and things like that that really hung on went a long ways and so i remember when pap would pay his grocery bill on saturday night that was a treat for the little Branhams. he'd get a sack full of candy little old peppermint stick candy say you know that was good i remember when he'd come out there maybe he'd have maybe he'd have 
four good sized sticks and there was five randoms to divide it between everyone looking to see that he got his share them sticks had to be broken up and divided just exactly equal among them because all eyes were turned to that candy i guess i cheated a little bit on that all the kiddies would get all they could eat you know and they were just eating all they could and eat their candy up i licked mine a little while you know and i'd reach over and get a piece of that old brown paper sack the meal was wrapped in and pulled off a little piece of it and roll it up and put it in my pocket i wait till monday and so then i think now monday come along and mom would say billy i would say yes mom take the bucket i wasn't it wasn't one of these little old galvanized buckets it was a big cedar bucket and an old god dipper how many ever seen a god dipper and oh that's right all right and go down to the spring and pull up the water you know and put it in the bucket my that was my job i look over to my brother and i'd say i tell you what i'll do if you go get the bucket of water i'll take i've got my candy yet i'll let you lick it till i can count 10 slow one two like that i was a businessman see sat back in the shade you know while my brother went and got the water lick on the candy well i tried to make that 10 just about as good as i could you know and you ought to see him lick my my he got more than 10 licks off of it all right well monday would be a pretty good day for me because i keep that piece of candy you know just work right on that candy and they know i had it too you know oh my i guess today i could go out and not on sunday but some other day and buy a box of hashes but it never tastes like that candy. How many of you eat peppermint candy and old fashioned bar crackers? Let's see your hands. Oh my, see, I'm telling you, that wouldn't go bad right now. That's right. And oh, for meals, we would have mulligan stew. We were Irish to the core, you know.